Hey everybody, we're going to show you our Mercy staff. Um, we've got everything <clears throat> pretty much working, so uh, we're going to go over all the pieces now. So as you can see here, we've got, this is a connector, I'll show how that operates in the head here in a minute. The whole head's removable, it's designed to pull off and come back on, so we've got these little insert here, uh, so you can screw that in. Uh, to take it on and off, but uh, right here you can see we've got some RGB LEDs and we've got some strapped in on the top here that will shine out the top of the tip and uh, we come back here so embedded in this thing is a little switch we uh, hit it a lot better on this one than we did in the other version so uh, it's it's quite uh, sneaky in there, and you can just operate it with your thumb once the other handle's on. Then we have this guy, which if you saw the other one, uh, the other video, this is the module we used. But um, this little guy, while okay for charging this and for holding the battery, it's not um, putting out enough juice. It, I, we actually blew the first one up. Uh, I bought a bunch of these, so I just yank them out and throw them in this one because we cut this up to fit inside the pipe. So we didn't know what to do. We were playing with it. We got it working, but it was a little too weak. So we stopped doing that and uh, picked up this guy. Uh, this is a just a regular DC to DC converter. Uh, links to all this stuff. We got everything on a Amazon, so um, links are all in the description if you want to look at trying to do this yourself. So uh, this is an 18650 lithium battery. Uh, runs at like 3.74 volts. Uh, 3.7 and or 4 volts. It, it's clocking in around 4, but that's not important because this is going to up convert it to 6 volts. Now, the motor we bought is 12, but if we run it at 12, it's too fast. Way too fast. Uh, 12 R It goes faster than 12 RPM. I haven't clocked it yet, but um, it just doesn't feel right for the weapon. Uh, so, the, right in here, you can see we soldered directly to the board. This is the plus and minus coming off of basic it's connection here and here. So we just attach to the plus and minus to the battery. Uh, everything seems to still work as far as the charger goes. You just plug into the charger here. You could do something else with the with the USB. We actually thought about putting the USB out of this or the attaching USB to run the LEDs but I decided not to do that. Uh, basically once I got this down to a voltage that I was happy with, it's clocking in around five and a half. So it's it's five and a half volts output here. And if you've never used one of these before, this will go all the way up to 24. In fact, it, it came up 24 as soon as I installed it. Uh, this little, uh, whatever you call it, uh, pot, it's a, I know these words, I swear. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, variable resistor uh, potentiometer. And you just adjust this little tiny screw right here. Let me see if I can get this in frame better. But uh, you adjust this little tiny screw here, and you put your meter on the end, on the output, read the voltage. What I did was just adjust it till I was happy with the speed. Then we read it with the meter. It was 5.5 volts. So the LEDs will handle that without an issue. So we went ahead and well, jerry-rigged this. This is not the permanent install, but before I loot, you know rewire everything, figure out how to get everything connected, I wanted to kind of show it all off and show you all of what we're doing here. Um, so this is the line that goes up to the LEDs. This is a double pole, see if I can get this right, double pole, triple throw. That is not what you need for this, that's just what we had. <laughs> uh, a, you need a, it's, it's a little bit different to find one, but you need a three position double pole, double throw. Because so you need an off position, an on position, and uh, another on position. So normally they're rated like on, off, on. We, I'll find an equivalent that will work and put it in the description. I don't know. I don't think you can get it off Amazon. I think we looked. But I'll find one and post a link to DigiKey or something for uh, a switch that, that will work. Now, because we picked this up at a local, local hardware store. And uh, essentially what we did in order to convert it was jumper the two center pins for positive and negative so the center pins are positive and negative when it's all the way over it connects these two pins to this one when it's when it's the other direction it connects these two pins to this one and uh 
that's basically it. So these are the negative lines that run up to the LEDs. So we're grounding them. And even through this, it's going to keep the same the the same ground to the whole system. It's not a floating ground as far as I can tell. Uh, I can read the pretty pretty solid voltage from here to to heat from from the negative to the positive. Uh, I can still read it, so that's why everything works because all basically got the same ground. So shouldn't have any issues there. Um, so without further ado, let me go and show you this, and then we'll put the head on, and I'll show you all that. So how this works, and <clears throat> so the head here. Uh, if you watch the other video, you notice that we can only go one direction because the head would rotate itself off. Well, to prevent that, we put these little studs on here, and we'll, I'll show you in the in the in the big head over here that I got a piece of acrylic in there, and that was the big kicker to to change everything up. That's why we moved. Normally, last time we had it up in here, uh, we we drove from like right here. Now we're driving all the way up the top of the tip, and I'll show all that. But uh, that's what these are doing is preventing lateral like torsional uh movement so that you actually have to unthread the screw and then pull the head off so that it won't unscrew itself so without further ado this is uh now in person this all this looks a little green to me but it keeps picking up yellow on the camera it's actually yellow i just might not be seeing the red as much i asked some people other people and they seem to be picking up the red so it looks more yellow to them uh, i just wish it was you know, as being an RGB LED, it's red and then green, and the red cancels the blue, and you get yellow. Uh, but, as you can see, we go backwards. Now we got blue, and it's turning in the other direction. And I made sure to calibrate it so it fits the weapon, because I was halfway through this build and went, Oh, no. Go look that up real quick. Um, so that's how, that's how the electronics all work. So, let me show you off in here. Now, this is just, I don't know, this is... Some of this is lopsided. We're we're not really we haven't really permanently installed all this yet. We did glue this whole shaft together, but the wings are still kind of just I think super glued on real quick. Uh, they weren't positioned. But this is a piece of acrylic like I was talking about. I'll I'll run a normally what I would do is run a screw through here into that into that hole into that uh, this insert here. Uh, but. For test purposes, I'm not going to do it because it doesn't matter. It just prevents the, the head from rolling off. And then this right here is a thin piece of natural PLA. And we're using that as a diffuser inside there. So that's going to diffuse the light. But what it it still has, as the head moves, it still has a wobble to it, like a, a pulsation as the, the different LEDs show up. But we kind of left that in there. We didn't try to get rid of it because... Well, A, we were having trouble getting enough light to go up there because originally we are just going to put LEDs on the top and have them shine up, but we, without going to some pretty high-end LEDs, we weren't going to get enough enough light up in the top. So all you do to insert this is we send it in the tube, and the light's probably not going to let me do this, but these two little um, things that clip in there, so they're both in there and then got junk all over the place in here one of these days i'll clean my desk but uh let's see if we can't get this thing in frame and not hit anything but uh as you can see it moves and it lights up and then we can turn the other direction Well, I fell off. Uh, that's why you have the, uh, the screw in there. I leaned it forward a little bit too far trying to get in camera and, uh, and it fell off. But. but that's the blue direction. And as you can see, the head, it's, I hit my arm. But as you can see, the head glows and uh, it also glows out the top here through that acrylic piece, which is why that's in there to, uh, Give us a good glow out the front, glow out the side there. And then, uh, see if I can't get myself clipping my arm here. And then, uh, then we got the yellow side. Uh, it's a little bit lopsided. You, you can see it kind of hesitate. Um, but that's because when I glued these all on, some of the 
I just this wing here is further out than the other one, so it's causing a a problem. But uh, that's pretty much the version two of the Mercy staff. We had to redesign a couple parts, redesign how we did a lot of stuff. But what I'm gonna do now um, to get ready for the new one. Now this was built for somebody in a foreign country, so we didn't want to ship the entire weapon assembled. Normally I would have uh, tried to do all of this and then insert it into the pipe uh, and, and make sure it was one full pipe. Uh, but because we were shipping this to a foreign country, I don't want to send just a PVC pipe, metric pipes and stuff. I don't, I can't get them here. I didn't know if, I didn't want to make, I wanted to make sure all the parts would fit and they wanted to the electronics wired. So we went with this and, um, this isn't the one that'll go in there, but we've got this piece here clips in here. Uh, we've got a, we had to modify it so it doesn't have this piece in here. This isn't the one that goes in there. But uh, this clips in here like this, and then you can insert the other pipe in here. But that was just for shipping. Uh, if that is a teardown point you want to make, you could do that. But I want to, I want to, when I do a full one for here, I'm going to have the full pipe. That way I can, uh, it'll be a little bit more stable. Because there's a lot of weight up in this end. It's actually really hard to hold on to this with just holding this little nub back here. Because that's a lot of weight out that end. Um... But uh, if you're curious, this is the type of motor we used. So this is in here. Um, this is basically just inside the pipe right here. And I'll have a link to this. I just got it off Amazon. Uh, it's a 12 RPM motor, 12 volts. And then this is all 3D printed, uh, this piece here. And then that screws into the, you can see on the, the end here, we got these screw holes. That screws into the end there. Uh, and this is a 1.5 millimeter piece of acrylic that I just glued on top. And the reason I did that, uh, was because during experimentation and basically once this was all installed, there was no way to replace the bat, the motor. In fact, this is glued onto the motor. And, uh, so when I was going through the iterative process of trying to figure this all out, I just attached these to this piece of acrylic so that I can get in there with a screwdriver, kick that off and break it loose and not, and then take the screws out and remove this whole piece without having to mess with it. Uh, we also notched this, I don't know if I showed this earlier, but we notched this out and I uh, used a metric ton of hot glue in here to hold everything down. Uh, but that's just to make sure that, <clears throat> cause this, the head runs right on this shaft and uh, I'm, I might to go ahead and like put some white lithium grease or something on this. I haven't, I haven't looked into what kind of lubricant would go in here, but that'll just help it move a little smoother. Like, like I said, it's, it's got a hesitation point and any kind of <clears throat> slight imbalance is causing, you know, a slowdown. But if we put more power into it, you know, it goes too fast. So, uh, without upgrading to a full-blown motor controller, which is possible. We just didn't want to do that because we're trying to keep this simple so that people can do it. Um, and uh, one last thing I'll show is this actually clips in here. So once all of this is is installed, you can hold the, the, hold the shaft right here and then just flip this switch up and down. And it will, uh, it'll do the magic. So then you, you barely be able to see this once you get the whole thing painted. And it'll be kind of a cool, cool way to do it. So that is our motion for the Mercy staff. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for checking out uh, what we're doing here. Um, we have, uh, I think we've got this, the, the files up on the website. Uh, I have to check. Uh, don't think the, well, we may go ahead and add the motion parts to the file. Uh, just in case anybody wants to do this build. Um, if not, uh... Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and add them. So, uh, anyway. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully we can uh, get this all built out and show you a full, complete Mercy staff with motion and all that stuff. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you next time. If there are other things you want to see us do, let us know. We're doing a couple new things. I'm starting to do design work in uh, Fusion. 
uh, in a series. So if you want to see that, if you got props you want to see us do, if you want to see motion and things like this, these are a little more in-depth projects, a little more complicated, and we don't have a lot of time for that kind of stuff right now. But uh, I know there was a big demand for this because uh, people keep asking about it. So thank you all for, uh, for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.